Good evening. Welcome to Victory Update for Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. My name is Greg Stevens, and we are live right now, also live on Facebook on the Victory Channel. Joining me today is Quest Gatlin. David is here. Tim is down at the yeah. Partner Service Center. It's and a special, <clears throat> special guest. Get your Bible, get ready. It's gonna be great. Quest, what's happening? Well, a lot's going on, but something I wanted to show you guys real quick was this product offer called Under His Shadow. It's finding safety in the refuge of the secret place. What's cool about this is we're not just sending out packs of CDs. It's available a free digital download. It's gonna be at govictory.com slash victory update. Totally free, a three CD series. I think that's awesome. It's pretty exciting. Getting into the word of God, right? It Greg. is exciting. It I'm, is exciting, I'm, come on. And, and absolutely free. Get yeah. one for someone else. Okay. Tim Fox is with us. He is at the Partner Service Center. If you don't know what the Partner Service Center is, it's where we take your prayer request and we have licensed, trained prayer ministers to minister to you. Tim, what's happening at the Partner Service Center? Yes, Greg, and it is also the place where every Monday through Friday at 930 Eastern, we have morning prayer, our live prayer program right here from the Partner Service Center where people call in with their prayer requests. The phone lines are open during this program and even beyond, so if you need to call, 877-281-6297, particularly if you have someone that has been incarcerated. Our guest today has a lot, a lot of, of influence and a lot of experience dealing with those types of people. And so people that need to get free from that, they need to be in, uh, in, in our program today. Now, I wanna read you this prayer, uh, praise report that I got. Uh, Jean called in and said she was healed in her arm. So. Praise God. If you've got a prayer request or a praise report, call in for your uh, praise reports. Now, I do have one thing, Greg, I wanted to show you, I wanted to share with you before I send it back to you. Our guest today, his son, Brandon, called in uh, and asked, uh, asked for us to do something. It says, do not amen him once and boo him every time. He needs to be humble. I'll just pass it <laughs> on to you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll just get rid of that one. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, let's take a look at the news here for today go. in the spirit of faith. Here's Mike Garofalo. Thanks, Greg. A Massachusetts company says its experimental vaccine against the coronavirus showed encouraging results in very early testing. Cambridge-based Moderna says its vaccine triggered immune responses in eight healthy middle-aged volunteers. The experimental vaccine generated antibodies similar to those seen in people who have recovered from COVID-19. Study is being led by the U.S. National Institutes of Health. And as America gets back to business, on Monday, automakers restarted their manufacturing plants with new COVID-19 safety measures in place. At least for the immediate future, we don't know how long, but at least for now, everybody's going to have to take their temperature daily and fill out that screening, and they'll have to, to go through the same screening process every morning when they come to work. As workers were returned to this Detroit area Fiat Chrysler truck assembly plant, they said they felt safer there than in any store they've been in. In all, tens of thousands of American auto workers are back on the job. Social distancing is being required and extra cleaning crews will be on hand. Meantime, states are continuing to relax restrictions. In Texas, child care centers, zoos and bars are now allowed to reopen. And turning to prayer, a new survey of American high school and college students found that 39% say they are praying more often. CBN News report also says due to the coronavirus, 28% are thinking more about spiritual issues, while 80% are concerned that their friends or family may get infected. A majority of students say they are paying close attention to news about the pandemic. The survey was conducted by the Young Americans Foundation and the Federalist. And while countries around the world continue to scramble to deal with the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, Greece is apparently onto something. With close to 11 million residents, only 2,800 have been infected with the virus and just 163 people have died. And checking people at the border seems to be made all the difference. As ABC News reports, since March 20th, only Greek citizens have been allowed to enter the country and everyone is tested at the airport. The first order of business, filling out a tracing form, then a throat swab sample is taken and people are sent to a designated hotel till the results come back the next day. Those who test negative go home and must self-quarantine for 14 days, while those testing positive stay in the hotel and 
get treated by medical professionals. And the Ohio Star is reporting that the Obama administration's Treasury Department regularly monitored former Trump National Security Advisor Michael Flynn's financial records beginning back in December of 2015. The report cites a former senior Treasury Department official and veteran of the intelligence community who reportedly filed a whistleblower complaint in 2016 and 2017. One other name included in the official whistleblower paperwork is former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort. The specific names of others reportedly surveilled by the Treasury Department are sealed but are said to include members of Congress, senior staff of the 2016 Trump campaign, and members of the Trump family. The whistleblower alleges that her two complaints were never followed up on and instead covered up. A conservative college instructor says he was suspended from his job due to his tweets. The College Fix is reporting that the Catholic University of America told adjunct professor John Tieso that he will not be teaching summer classes due to posts on his Twitter account. One of the posts mentioned in the report was about California Senator Kamala Harris, and the other was about former President Barack Obama. Tieso says he was told that if he wanted to remain a member of the CUA faculty, his Twitter account had to go. Now back to you in the Victory Studio. Thank you, Mike. It seems like everybody is monitoring everybody these days and uh, they want to monitor you. And this is why we bring you the news in the spirit of faith. Why do we do that? So that you're not in fear and so that you know how to pray. All right. Quest has left me. He's over on the other side with David yeah. and the guys. What's David? You guys are... <laughs> I don't know. You know, he's such a good singer. Such a, you, mean, you recruited him during the news. I did. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing over there? I mean, do that part and then get over here and help us. So that's what we're doing. Great. Quest, what's coming up? But here's the deal. Tonight's The Bridge. And okay. it, for those viewers who don't know, The Bridge is the Young Adults Ministry. Um, here at Eagle Mountain International Church. And what you can do is, so the live stream, of course, currently we can't necessarily meet in person, so we're live streaming. So every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., the Bridge Young Adults, it's thebridge.emic.org. You can get on their Facebook, uh, Instagram, and live stream and join us. So for all okay, of the young you're adults. You're doing my watching, job now. Well, and, come, and but bonus, <laughs> the kids you are know, leading worship tonight. That's true. It's, Speaking it's gonna of be amazing, leading worship, so it's going to be great. Speaking of leading <laughs> worship, you better take great, it. Great, <laughs> great time. What are you thinking? What are you guys doing? Doing. What are we doing, Michael? Great things. Great, Great things. things. What are they? Woo!
and he has done great things. What great things has he done for you? You need to testify about it. I want to let you know that the prayer lines are open. If you want somebody to pray with you, the number is right there on the screen in the United States, 877-281-6297. Why do you say in the United States? Well, we have people watching us right now from South Africa and Australia and all around the world from the top to the bottom and all the way around the middle. All right, let me introduce you to our guest, Mike Barber. He played football in the National Football League for 10 years when he received the call to go into the prisons, bringing the good news of Jesus to those who were incarcerated. And Mike has ministered behind the bars for 40 years. With the national recidivism rate around 75% within five years of release, the need for Mike Barber's heart for prisoners is evident. His ministry and his website is Mark, Mike Barber. Dot org. I missed that. Mike, welcome. I am so honored to be here, Greg. Thank so you so much. Before we start, I yeah. was, we were getting ready to move, and my mother had given me a box of some things um, that were mine, and I found in it some old binders like this, and in these old binders were some baseball cards and football cards, and guess what I found? What's that? A Mike Barber, <laughs> Houston Oilers. That boy needed Jesus then. <laughs> now, there, you, you can see it right there. It's on the screen right there. Yeah. Mike Barber, Houston Oilers, tied in. And it says in here that uh, Mike enjoys meeting people. Well, that worked out. Uh, I do. For the, matter of fact, before we, here, I got to. Give me sign this. Yeah, I got to get uh, you to sign that one. Now, if I sign it, it will go from one cent to two cents, <laughs> value wise. That is funny. Well, I got I got a signed Mike Barber card now. Okay, wow. before thank you, thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. I'm I'm uh, I am blessed. Before we get going, and I want to hear what God's been <laughs> dealing with you and what's happening. I want to do a little video here from your son Brandon. By the way, he made a comment uh, earlier. Tim made the comment that uh, we're not supposed to amen you at all. Well, he, he you know, know your personnel there. That's all <laughs> That's I can right. say. So here's a, here's what your ministry's been doing with your son Brandon. Watch this. What's up, Victory? Here with my dad and Shahi. What's up? Here we are, Mike Barber Ministries. Even though we have stopped going into the prisons right now, we have not stopped being, we've basically taken Jesus to the streets. And so I want to show you a little bit here. We got my friends right here. We were able to gather 26,000 mils and we're passing it out every single day. Look at all these bags of hope. Hundreds of cars and families are driving up right here to our warehouse headquarters. And every week, because of your generosity and you partners of Victory, thank you. We're helping hundreds of people right here in the city of Houston, many families who have loved ones in prison. So we're excited about this, and we're just in this season of waiting till we can get back into prison. We're still bringing hope and love to all their families right here in downtown Houston. We love you, Victory. Thank you for everything and being a partner with us on how we can be able to love our city together. Thank Amen. you, Brandon. Isn't that uh, great? Uh, it's awesome. It, it is seeing these families uh, pull up in their in their vehicle and and because uh, uh, Houston was hit pretty hard. It was hit hard. It, it was hit hard. And the, and the thing where his church is and our warehouse there, our office, uh, it's right there in the middle of the of the fifth and the third ward, which is the most violent area yeah. in all yeah, of we're Houston. We're looking at it here. And and. Uh, you know, going up and I'm having fun with the, with the families that pull up and, but we pray for them. We ask what their needs are and uh, it's just a wonderful outreach. We feed a lot of inmates, families uh, and uh, officers as well as that. And every Saturday um, we have hundreds of cars that pull up and that Saturday gets bigger with vehicles as word gets out. This is, I think, about our third or fourth Saturday that we've done this and we'll do this until we get through all 26,000 meals. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank uh, you, you for mentioned, showing that. Yeah, oh, anytime. Uh, we, we're glad to be part of it. Yeah. I'm glad to be part of it. Um, you mentioned before we came on the air that God's been dropping a word in you yeah. all since the beginning of the year. Just yeah. take your time right now and, and minister to that to well, us. If you thank you, Greg. Uh, first, before I I, I share what God's put on my heart here. I, I, I just want all the viewing audience to know that, um, you know, this network, this ministry, uh, I could not put in words, Greg, uh, how I value this ministry. And that's the word that's reigning inside me now is the word value. Yeah. You know, what you value, you go beyond for, you respect, you 
honor, you, you know, you value your wife, your relationship. It's everything to you. And, and um, uh, you know, we're, we're in a, a time, a season worldwide where this virus has really hit us, mm -hmm. you know, but that doesn't mean God has changed. No. And if we, at this point, if we'll truly see the value of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and just stay true to his word. Um, you know, Betty Crocker says it this way in all of her recipes. For, for the best results, just follow the directions. Mm. And you know, all we have to That's do good. is just follow the directions, the, the directions. The word value, I put it this way, it's what I'm willing to pay for something. What am I willing to pay? This, this ministry here has sacrificed everything and more for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, you know, in the NFL, I, I had the privilege of playing for 10 years. I, I sat in this chair. I just had my recent surgery on my neck, my second one. I've got to go now with another back surgery here in a few weeks and then have both my knees replaced. But I'm still believing for the healing. But, Amen. you know, I, I've had now 16 major surgeries all from the game of football. Mm. I, I've, I've paid that price for it, and I would do it all over again. I, I, I love the <laughs> game, make that clear. But uh, 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 the, the value in, just think of what our Lord and Savior, our, our God sent our only son, His only Son yes. on the cross. Yes. That's how much He valued wow. us. That's the price that you're worth, isn't it? Yes, yes. And so what is my responsibility, Greg, in doing all of that is I believe it's to, to love him with everything in my life, mm -hmm. in my body, and to, uh, to serve him with everything that's in me. I value knowing that I am born again, yes. that I am a child of God. Yes. Amen? Amen. And... The word says this uh, in Psalms 19, 7. It says, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. So number one, know this, it's simple. God's word is perfect. You just have to receive that. You, you know, uh, playing the game of football. I was put that playbook in my hand. Yeah. And every play that is designed in that play in that playbook, every offensive play, it was designed to score. It never showed in the playbook being tackled. Right. It showed to score. Hmm. And that's what you and I are supposed to do. His word is perfect. We are designed to score. Every day Amen. of our life. Amen. It doesn't matter about the virus. And, you know, there, there is something that's being said at this very moment. I, I pick up on news and what um, these people say. And there's these two words now here recently that have been said a lot. And it says responsible behavior. Our responsible behavior is listen to our instructions. I don't leave the house now without a mask on. We put gloves on, my wife Shaheen and I. We put, we put gloves on. Our reasonable behavior is to just simply follow the instructions. And as people of God, our reasonable behavior is just simply taking God's word. This is my playbook. Yeah. My quarterback is Jesus Christ. Yes. He's never thrown an incompleted pass. All passes are for touchdowns. And he's got one bad Holy Ghost defense. <laughs> and all I have to do, all I have to do is pick it up and open it up and read it. That playbook full of X's and O's. I never questioned it. I never even thought to question it. My head coach put tons of time into it. And I took it and I did my best to study it and go play it. And today... Just these few points here with you is number one, God's word is perfect. And you've got to receive that down inside. So my natural responsible behavior 
is God, I, I, I receive your word. I stand on your word. I sod my feet, as Ephesians says, with the preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The second word that I want to say, God's word, Greg, transforms. Yes. Every True. time. An example, and I think he's watching now, a, a, a young man, he's my, he's my son uh, in the Lord. He just here in the last three days uh, got out of prison. Uh, Reginald Hicks, and 30 solid years in mm. prison. In 1990, he, he got out. He's Like I said, he's only been out just a few days. And as soon as he got out, he first went to see his dad. He lost his mother while he was in prison. But he went to see his dad. And j after he saw his dad, he came to uh, my wife and I's home. And he and his wife and kid spent the whole evening uh, with, with us. And I told him, I said, tell me some things that you learned the most. Hmm. And, and he started talking about, he picked up in 1990, was in, he, he was in Harris County Jail. We're talking about God's Word transforms. He picked up in Harris County Jail a little booklet called Faith to Faith mm -hmm. by Gloria Copeland. Mm -hmm. And to this day, all these years, he's never put that booklet down. He reads it every day, day in, day out. And I asked him this question. I said, Reg, what is the biggest thing all these years in prison, standing on the word, when are you going to get out of prison any day now? That's what I tell prisoners all the time. You don't say, well, my sentence says this. No, when somebody asks you, when you getting out of prison, you got one answer, any day now, any day now. When is your world going to turn around? Any no, day now. Good. His word is, is perfect. His word transforms, amen. And he told me this, Greg. He said, the word never changes. That's true. It always works, amen. I tell inmates all the time, our struggles do not disappoint us. Mm. They don't. They, they, they don't, dis excuse me, they don't disqualify us. Mm. They don't disqualify us, amen. God is perfect. He transforms and he makes things brand new. Look at Peter. Look at all the things. Do you think, you think when Jesus looked into the eyes of Peter and said, Peter, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Do you think Jesus didn't see all his uh, qualities that disqualified him? Possibly. No. See, Jesus is proof. Let me say it this way. Now I'm fixing to really get your attention. Jesus was the ultimate gold digger. Okay. And that's who we all are. Just bear with me. Jesus was looking at nothing the Word of God says but his heart. Mm. He wasn't looking at all his dirt. Yeah. And I tell this to inmates all the time. We're not here looking at your dirt. The Mike Barber Ministries, we're gold diggers. <laughs> we're looking for that heart that is completely committed mm. to change that heart, to make you realize God's word is perfect. God's word transforms. And that's what this ministry here, that's what this network is all about. KCM is all about all these years. Yeah, they're gold diggers. They get accused of a lot of other <laughs> stuff. But I'm telling you, they're gold diggers. All they want to do is reach into that heart and change that person. I've got men and women that was once in prison. I preached in a church here maybe two years ago, a black church, and I got through ministering. And then they said, Mike, we want to surprise you with something. And about that time, eight or nine individuals came forward and they all started testimony. Every one of them got saved while they were in prison through our ministry. Oh. And now they're out pastoring their own churches <laughs> for the glory of God. I'm here to tell you, God's word is perfect. You just got to receive it. You got to claim it. You got to hold on to it. God's word transforms. I don't care who you are. I got a guy right now in a prison, third worst, third worst in, uh, uh, highest on a level in the country at the Aaron Brotherhood. A bad dude. Life sentences over and over and over. But it was at the right time ministering to him. 
He's in an area is considered the 11 worst inmates out of 140,000 that's locked up here in the state of Texas. But God used others. He used me to penetrate this inmate's heart. His last name is Bird. And shared with him today, long story short, because we don't have much time here left, that Jesus, <laughs> he still saves. Yes, yes, he does. He forgives. And he, the best thing Come on, Mike. is he forgets as though it never happened. Yes. 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 I know personally I can shout for that. I, I've never had a drinking problem. I've never done drugs. I've never had pornography as a problem. My, my problem has been my temper. I was taught to fight. But I know this. Jesus' word is perfect. Come on. And he transforms. Mm. I don't care where you are. And maybe most likely you're behind the worst bars of all, those invisible bars. Oh, yeah. Were you hard to, to admit I got a problem, but I need help. But I'm here to tell you this network is here for you 24-7. Get involved in it. Listen to the words of all these great men and women that come to you. And understand his word is perfect. And his word transforms. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you've been. It's never too late with God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and hallelujah. How am I, how am I doing no, on you're time fine. here? We're, 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 we're okay keep here. We're keep going. I, yeah. I want to honor here. I do want to say a couple more things here. And I could go give you one testimony after the other, after the other. The next thing that God's word does, God's word gives incredible wisdom. Yes. Incredible wisdom. Psalms 25, uh, Psalms uh, 111, 10 says this, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. Let me say something here. True fear gives reverence to God. It creates wisdom. Fear the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. See, the important thing of what I'm sharing with you this very moment is a word that you can take and run with it. God's word's perfect. I say it again. God's word transforms. And God's word is full of wisdom. Amen. And then the last thing I just want to say here in Psalms uh, 19, 8, the commandments, the statues of the Lord are right. God's word is right. It's right. It should be your lifeline. It should be your support. To God be the glory and the honor for all. Say it with me. God's word is perfect. God's word is perfect. God's word transforms. God's word transforms. Full of wisdom. Full of wisdom. And is right. And is right. For my soul. For my soul. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 When he can take an inmate on death row, radically change their life, and use for the kingdom of God, I want you to know, I don't care what you have done, it is never too late for Jesus Christ mm. to change you to make you brand new, to give you a new light. I walked out of a prison here just before we got locked out with this virus. I tapped an inmate on the shoulder. I looked him in the face and said, I love you. Kept right on walking. <laughs> I get a letter from this inmate, dear Mr. Mike, I don't know if you remember, but I was that inmate on the last row, Ellis unit. He tapped me on the shoulder. He looked me in the face and said, I love you. He said, I want you to know, he said, when you touch me, I was delivered from AIDS. They say there's nothing, no trace left in my body. Wow. Oh, God. Because you touched me. 
I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Jesus wants to touch you by letting you know His Word's perfect. He transforms. He gives you incredible wisdom. And He is right. In Jesus' name. Father, everybody out there at the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus, touch where a touch is needed. Lord, let them know they're awesome, they're God's creation. And they're not disqualified. I don't care what they've done. Jesus loves them. Yes. So, Father, we thank you for your healing hand. A new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Such a good word. And, uh, Mike, people are, people are responding. Amen. The number is on the screen. Call the number. Call the number. I don't know why I just keep saying that. Have the courage to call the number. Prayer minister is there right now. They're not going to sell you anything. They're going to give you new life. 877-281-6297. Mike, people have called in and I'm going to, we're going to come back. I'm going to have them sing something and we're going to come back and, and talk about that transformation because you mentioned something about this guy. Yeah and the transformation of there. And, and I, want, I want you to hear more of that. And we've got some of your prayer requests. He's gonna come back. Let's have the guys sing something. We'll be right back. Call the number that's on the screen. Amen. For the Lord is good and his love endures. Yes, his Lord is good forever. And I'll shout.
for the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His love endures. Yes, the Lord. He's good forever. Yes, David. His mercy endures forever. Oh, God, you touched my heart today, man. The whole time you were talking, that thought was going around in my heart. He's just good. Yeah. He can't be anything but good. Hallelujah. He's only good. Yes. yes. And he's good to everybody. Hallelujah. Everywhere. Hallelujah. Every time. Hallelujah. No matter what. Yeah, no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. No matter His what. mercy endures forever. forever. Greg, what a thought, man. (laughs) His mercy endures endures forever. I I grew up a preacher's kid, (laughs) but I'm telling you, I've needed the mercy of God more than I can possibly recount. I don't know, take it from me, I guess. I just know you touched my heart and I think think he's touching people's hearts right now on the other side of this camera that needed to be reminded Yes. The Lord is good. Yes. He's not just good to everybody else. He's good to you, right where you are. He hasn't forgotten you and he hasn't forsaken you. His mercy endures yeah. forever. David, David, here's, here's what happens. And Mike, you can chime in. When I first showed you this card, you said that guy needed Jesus. <laughs> I think that's what you said. David, what, what the enemy does is he shows you, this is you. This yeah. is you yeah. back in 1979, that's you. But that's not you now. No, no. And that's what the enemy does. He shows you pictures of you the way it used to be. Now listen to this. And he tells you, see, nothing's ever, nothing's changed. You're that, look, look, nothing's changed. No, everything changed because Jesus is a gold digger. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. He speaks, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. He speaks to your spirit man. Yeah. And pulls you up from the place yeah. that you're in. Uh, Mike, so many yeah. are calling in. Uh, people wanting to call on the phone line and the, the numbers there on the screen in the United States. I apologize, we don't have a number for you in Africa. We don't have a number for you in Australia. I saw your posts on here. 877-281-6297. Let me give you a couple of these prayer requests. Here's one, they didn't uh, put a name, they didn't want their name on it. PTSD, they're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. Vincent, name Vincent says, Mike, I have a problem with my temper and anger. Yeah. I need help. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, he just wrote it. I need help. Yeah. I love that. I love that honesty. Here's yeah. here's Victorine standing for her prodigal son. Yeah. Wants to yeah. see her son come home. Amen. Take take. We've got five minutes left. Take four minutes or so here and just minister to people. Pray over them. Well, to the to the to the gentleman that called and says, I I have an anger problem. Stay thirsty for God. Realize he is perfect. Oh, how I can relate. Let, let me say something. If Can I just really be honest here with where I am? You know, you, you show the picture on the uh, football card. I, I was born, I'm really being honest here now. I was born East Texas redneck <laughs> through and through. You know what that goes to? I was raised to hate anybody that wasn't my color. And to God be the glory. I got a black gentleman. When I just talked about Reg, he's my son, he's black. He's my spiritual son. I'm going to take care of him best I can now that he's out, get him on his feet. Become a minister and a preacher of the gospel because it's a need. Got a gentleman, black gentleman in Angola prison, Louisiana, biggest max security prison in the country in the world. Been in for some 23, 24 years. Most radical change man that I know, man of God. I had the privilege of going and speaking to him on behalf of the board. Long story short, got him out. Boy, he's about to get out. He's going to come live with my wife and I. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Our home is his home. Wife, she, he is more excited about it than I am. 
I'm going to tell you, if you've got anger problems, whatever it is, it's important that you surround yourself with the right people. People that will love you enough to shoot you straight. It'll make a big difference. If God can change me, and He has, and I'm still changing. I still at times, be honest, I want to take the bull by the horn. <laughs> Greg, I had an inmate here a while back in Florence, Arizona, death row. Got right in my face. He said, when I haul off and hit you, you're going to turn the other cheek. I said, go for it. I hadn't read that far in the Bible yet. <laughs> <laughs> but God can take you and he can change you. And he will change you. I'm so honored to sit in this chair representing this incredible network. And Father, every need that's yes. coming across by phone, whether it's a healing, whatever it is, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give it to you. You're still in the healing business. And we claim it together. These incredible musicians, they're all ministers. I love watching David play. I never talked to David. <laughs> but I, for years, I, he, his joy when he worships and he puts everything into it. I love just watching him. All these people, they're so amazing. You've got a great family that supports you in prayer and in love. So get involved. Again, I say his word is perfect. It will transform you, make you brand new. The Bible says in Romans, be don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In Jesus' name, you have a new mind. Amen. Amen. And amen. You do. You do. And it's important that you tell someone about it. If you can, go to that number again and testify. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. If you can't do that, tell somebody around you what has happened to you today. If you can't do that, just type it on Facebook. Let somebody know that God's word is true and that you are an overcomer. You're the gold that Jesus was digging. We're so glad that you joined us today. Mike, thank you so much. That's an honor. I've been so blessed. Guys, sing us out. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Yes, Lord.